of course it's everywhere in the news that artificial intelligence is going to definitely affect several job sectors and one of the areas that we're particularly interested in is how will it affect the computational modeling which is a subject of the things i talk about in this channel so i'm going to go through what i see as how artificial intelligence will influence what we do with computational modeling what are the areas it will affect and how can it actually help us so let's see what can relax as we get into this video so as we begin to look at this topic i thought the best place to start is an article that is published by Los Bain, who published this within the New Atlas magazine. And it's a, a subject that says, what jobs will AI hit hardest and which will stay safe the longest? And the one of the graphics from that publication is what we see here, which basically gives you a graphical representation of the part that will be hit hardest and the part that will be least hit hardest. So the part that are in blue here indicates the least affected by AI and the part that are in gray are the most affected by AI and the part that are in blue are the ones that are complementary so in which case AI and human skills or human those jobs they will complement themselves so basically for the kind of jobs that are in the building and ground and building construction cleaning maintenance or even installation and repair they are all not affected and these are sort of the jobs that cannot easily be automated so you need a groundsman to help with the building construction a civil engineer to help with the construction of a building however the ones that are a little bit automated that could be done by a language model things like office support work administrative support work or even some preparation of legal documents those will be most affected by you know the presence of a language model like chat gpt However, when you come into computational modeling, so there's this particular data on computer and ma mathematical. So that sector is complementary in the sense that you still need the human skill as well as the AI skill. So it's almost like a 50-50 mix or maybe a different kind of weighting in terms of how the impact would be. So this is really very good news for people that work in computational modeling like you and like myself, because now all of a sudden you have this complementary effect that instead of charging still replacing you, they can actually be like a virtual assistant for you in doing your work. And this is the feeling that you get a lot when you talk to people with computational modeling or mathematical modeling background, that AI tools like ChatGPT, Bing or Bard is really there to help them in doing their work. And that's the way that AI would actually impact on computational modeling. Then I thought that, okay, now that this is the case, so where exactly do we expect this complementary effect to exist? And I will speak about some of those in the remainder of this video. And the first of them is in code development, and which is writing of code across multiple um, language styles. So typically, if you're going to work in computational modeling, you probably need to have some kind of knowledge in certain code types. So for example, myself, I write quite a lot in MATLAB. I can write Python scriptings. You know, I've also done some Fortran scripting, you know, for development of UMAT. I also have experiences with shell scripting. So you do need to have this widespread experience, but you can imagine instantly within the, this code, you could use language models to help you with that. And I just want to illustrate that with an example. So we're going to use ChatGPT, which is, of course, one of the most popular language models as an AI tool. Okay, so if we start, so we're going to use ChatGPT and you basically need to go to this website, openchat.openai.com. And if you don't have an account, you create an account. I already have an account here. But the instruction I'm giving to it here is that in this section, say, write a MATLAB, Python, C++, Fortran code for calculating the area of a circle giving a radius of five and then you make that submission and then you wait and see what outcome it will give to you so you can see the the, the, the nice beautiful thing with this is that chat gpt is obviously aware of different languages and it can actually use that for you so you can see here the radius is calculated based on a matlab code this is based on a python code and it tells us how to again a slightly different syntax even a c plus plus code it tells you how you can do that and then also how you can also do that even within fortran of course you have to be careful in how you understand this thing. and this is why it's complementary yes it gives you this it doesn't necessarily mean that these are perfectly right so you need to have some kind of experience to be able to prove that what it's giving you actually makes sense another area that it can actually help us as a complementary tool within computational modeling is debugging of codes. One of the things you find a lot of time people spend time working with their code is debugging the code to find out where errors are. So I'm going to copy this particular code and 
and then try and see if you can find what the error in the code will be so that's my instruction debug the code and tell me what error is and how i can debug it then you press shift and enter and then i paste that code so let's just say i'm going to instead of writing pw i'm going to write P P pw just it's like a mistake that i've made and i don't know maybe um what if i decide to take away this enter so and let's see whether i can pick out those two errors that exist in this code because this is the debugging element so he said okay the code has a couple of errors inside it's picked up we found out that okay the pure function is wrong it should be pow and then also it's found that i'm missing this instantly within it and it's done and giving me a corrected version of that code and this is very beautiful so you can imagine you have a large code and some section of it is identifying an error but you can't really know what error is especially if you're learning the language for the first time then the complementary effect that you can take that snippet of your code send it to chat gpt or some of these language models and instantly it will help you debug the code quickly and it won't tell you what error there is but of course again you need to be experienced in what you're doing to be sure that what correction is giving you is workable the third area where i think um AI would really play a lot of role in complementing what we do in computational modeling is in data visualization and interpretation. Because one of the things we do in computational modeling is that we have a lot of data. So you want to be able to visualize that data and also make some kind of interpretation with that data. So we're going to go back to ChatGPT and I'll give you the scenario. I don't actually have any data. It's going to create that data for me. I just want to explore the distribution of height of students that are in secondary schools within the United Kingdom. And I think it will be a normal distribution. So I'm going to ask you to show me that. So basically, this is the, the, the challenge. Use MATLAB to show me the normal distribution of heights of 10,000 UK secondary school students. Also, plot the line of the normal distribution plot so that at least I'll know what it's trying to do for me. And then I give you that instruction and I'll see what our company will do. So instantly, I wanted to work in MATLAB and then it basically done that. It's got me some results in MATLAB. So I'll copy that and then it, it gives us some information here. So we're going to go back into MATLAB. So I'll create a new script and then I'll paste that information that it's giving me here. And then I'll just, so basically it's a normal distribution plot one and then we'll, so instantly you could see what it's done. So it's plotted the data, giving me a normal distribution data of some kind and also giving me actually what the normal plot will be. And this is almost like a perfect normal distribution file. And what it's basically trying to predict is that the height of students in secondary schools in the UK is about 1.7. You know, which it kind of makes sense, but in extreme cases, you may have students that are quite tall, up to two meters tall, and there are some students that could also be quite short around 1.4 meters. This is really the beauty of having such a system like this. It helps with visualization, it helps with interpretation of data. The other aspect where artificial intelligence can actually help us is in data analysis. Beyond just in visualizing that you want to be able to analyze that data and identify what trends exist in the data that you're trying to generate. So let's look at the scenario again with the system we're doing. So I said, okay, based on the data generated from the normal distribution plot above, please give me five trends you can identify in the data with respect to the height of secondary school students in the UK. So let's see what trend we can get. And instantly it looked at that trend and it began to give us some information. Some of this trend I already talked about it in the previous, you know, in the previous case. So the first thing is that the peak height, which is, you know, the common height that everyone is have in the UK as secondary student is about 1.7 meters, about 170 cm. And we saw that most frequent height falls close to the mean of this height value. And then it talks about this symmetry in the data, that the normal distribution is symmetrical. And if you look at the data that we have before, so clearly there's a bit of symmetry in this data. So everything is sort of balanced. It is not skewed to one side or another side. Maybe in a different kind of population, you may have something slightly different. But there's symmetry in the data and it talks about the range of the height spanning between a certain number 160 to 180 millimeter with a typical standard deviation of 10 cm and it said there's a rarity of extreme height as you move away from the mean in either the probability density decreases so if you basically if you look at the data here you could see that you know the possibility of having extreme height students are quite quite low there's a very small number of students in this region and that region so the probability density which is how regular, how common it is to see students that are in this height or in that height in secondary school is actually very, not very common. And so there's a rarity of extreme height that you can pick up from that. 
normality of assumption, the fact that the distribution of height follows the normal distribution indicates that it's reasonable to assume that height of secondary school students in the UK can be approximated to a bell-shaped curve. So yeah, so from what we've looked at, it's been able to approximate that for us and other kind of interpretation. So this is really something beautiful when it comes to use of AI tools. So you could have a really rich set of data and you could ask the questions like this, what are you seeing in that data? And it begins to make that interpretation for you. And this is particularly good if you have, you know, a lot of, let's say, experimental data and you want to see what trend that data is telling you. So the whole area of data analysis and making interpretations for you, complemented by AI, is something that you find particularly useful in this field. So as we conclude, what we can see that, yes, language models and artificial intelligence models will complement a lot of what we do in computational modeling. Instead of it actually being a negative, you find that it actually will be a positive. And so that's you know, the, the crux of the matter. If you're exploring to see how you can use ChatGPT in learning MATLAB, then this is a video for you to use. If you work in the area of composite materials and you want to see how you can use ChatGPT design uh, represent volume element of your composite material, then this is the video to see. Thank you for your interest in this channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.